up at unicorn here today in the form of auntie corn that's an auntie but just more awesome so as a woman in my mid-30s or a millennial i'm basically speaking to my gen z sisters as well as the younger millennial sisters ah you're my nieces big hugs so today i want to discuss the underlying causes of the incels preferences and why that's you Uh, And in the process, I hope to empower you to seek finer men. So these are preferences which ultimately endanger women who are in their preteens, early 20s, and or are neurodivergent in ways that cause what I am going to refer to as sweet naivete. Um, because some of us uh, still qualify as these things, even though we age beyond preteens and early 20s. I'm going to speak on these things as a routine victim of this problem in our society. Oddly enough, as much as I like, (laughs) love myself, for most of my life, I have been the embodiment of all three of these problematic tropes. The preferences of incels are rooted in insecurity, and fear. Allow me to explain what I've learned. Born sexy yesterday is a media trope found throughout pop culture where a woman is fully sexy, gifted with some superior level of ability, and childlike. And it was important for me to use the word childlike instead of childish because there are different connotations here. Incels, incel means involuntary celibate, as in I would be sexually active if I could, but no woman wants to sleep with me. So, celibacy. Incels have evolved to develop this as a preference. This thing that I mentioned before, the born sexy yesterday, right? Um, I've learned a lot about how predatory these things are considering these attributes tend to alarm my partner no matter how endearing. So I say that because I have all of these attributes as far as being childlike, uh, naive, very sweet. Um, My partner is at times shocked at how I survived life being so childlike and naive. Um, Having been with mostly predators in my past, my current partner, who is non-toxic, traditionally masculine, and non-predatory, stands in glaring contrast to these men. I can think of three attributes I have that arouse and intrigue predators, but alarm my partner because he is concerned with my safety and highest good and not taking advantage of me. So those same qualities make me a mark for men who are interested in taking advantage of me. So while they may stroke my ego about certain qualities that I have in reality, it's because of what they want to do to me. Incels are men who seek women who are really children, which makes African-American girls particularly susceptible due to how our physical bodies develop in juxtaposition to other races of women. People will superimpose their sexual fantasies onto black girls in their teens and preteens due to how puberty manifests in our bodies. The majority of us have been sexually assaulted, molested, exploited. This is not an exaggeration. I said the majority of African American girls and women have been sexually assaulted, molested, or otherwise exploited, perhaps not to the degree that I have, but I would argue that mine is a curious case. I recently visited a mental health professional and let's just say I ruined her day as a result of the intake process where she had to gather basic information about past traumas and why I began seeking mental wellness treatment. So, incels are men who are not winning in life, especially in the area of women and social acceptance. The dream of a woman who will accept them as God without comparing them to other men. If other men, on average, are better than they, then the only way they can dodge this level of rejection is with an inexperienced woman. Do you see where this is going? Let's continue. 
these men become predators due to the trauma of social rejection. A child, for the most part, will never reject you. Be dumb, smelly, or ugly. Children are the least averse people to the inadequacies of others. Blissfully ignorant. Add breasts, round buttocks, pubic hair height, and a menstrual cycle to a child, and you have the incel fantasy. An innocent child whose innocence you can excuse because she exists in the physical form of a sexy woman. This is dark, I know. Men used to run me off the road asking me how old I was. Running stop signs, stop lights, uh, just breaking laws at intersections, parking lots, just just aggressive. Especially between 10 and 21, right? Because I ended up converting to Islam and fully donning a very heavy type of hijab that is typically associated with Somali women and I also covered my face and part of my adaptation of the specific hijab was because of all of the public um well sexual assault um molestation and things that I was going through I was basically divorcing myself from my physical form because of the kind of attention it attracted in you know these urban areas so Men used to run me off the road asking me how old I was, especially between 10 and 21. I was sure there was something wrong with me due to the frequency with which this would happen, and it showed. Hence why I place a very high value on therapy. Grown men would become excited at the opportunity to teach me that I was beautiful rather than the freak of nature I believed that I was not knowing that it was their adult sexual attention on me as a child that was the root cause of this belief. This wasn't happening to my other friends, so I assumed there was something very wrong with me and that I somehow deserved all this scary abuse of terrible things that were happening to me. I remember one time a doctor in a hospital that I had been going to since a child. When I was 14, he asked me on a date. And I was so confused. I'm like, you know my mom, sir. You know my mom or my sisters, my, my brother when he was born. Like, why, why would you do that? But I was about to have my very first pelvic exam. And he was not the doctor who was going to give it to me. But he made his way into my room and was like, you know, would you like to go out? Can I call you sometime? Sir, I don't even own a cell phone. What, what do you mean? I, I, I wanted to throw myself from a building when he did that. And I think a lot of men don't understand that that's what some of us feel inside when they are adult men and they're approaching us as children uh, for sexual relationships. I didn't know why I wanted to hurt myself, but I did. Uh, it, it, it was j- just him asking. I felt like a total violation because this is someone I knew my mother would have trusted. My whole family trusted my whole family. I mean, we had been going to that same uh, clinic, you know. It it, it was for a combination of where you would have the dentist and your doctor. And it was, oh God, I mean, in my neighborhood. So just a very heavy childhood association with so many memories uh, happy and he ruined it I mean I could have when he walked into that room he didn't know what state that I would be in I could have been propped up with my legs open you know preparing for the doctor to come in and uh, carry out the pelvic exam which I called uh, a pap smear earlier but he came in anyway So anyhow, um, and yes, he was a doctor and some people say, well, you know, he's a doctor, so how can he be this incel? You know, some people, they can be a doctor and they can be making money, but in reality, maybe they're lanky, goofy, maybe they were rejected in their childhood and they have some kind of a mental monkey on their back as a result. There's a reason this man would walk in on a 14-year-old. 
asking for a date when she's all alone preparing to take her clothes off without an adult present, even though he knew my mother by her first name. Anyhow, so these men who were the financial, (laughs) intellectual, and social inferiors to women of their peer groups, their laughingstock seeking to be giants among pygmies, since they're the pygmies among giants in their actual natural social circle. Ignorant and inexperienced, the child is impressed, for example, with McDonald's and its golden arches, whereas a woman may prefer a Whole Foods deli for lunch because she understands the health implications of each meal. Now, the incel cannot afford to feed a woman a steady diet of whole foods. His range is McDonald's. <laughs> so he seeks a child to impress with those golden arches and engage rather than an adult woman who will Im- immediately see him and his salty, overprocessed, nutrition deficient McDonald's meal as subpar and unacceptable. So that doctor who walked in on me thought that he could impress me and make me fall in love with him because he was so much more older and mature and things like this. And I caught him staring at me when I was between 11 and 12, but, you know, I would just say hi, be happy to see him because I'd been seeing him all my life. Um... And that was the uncomfortable culmination of uh, what was going on. Um, I would have very easily started calling this man uncle in, in like a family type of way had I um, had he not done that, which is uh, another dangerous thing I guess we can talk about in another video. When you know people for so long, they become like family, but in reality, they will never be blood. The incel preference does not stop there, Okay. You'll hear them say things like, uh, they like their women all natural, right? Again, fetishizing the look of a child because makeup for the most part is for adults. It symbolizes a coming of age to some degree. What does a preteen or toddler, oh, what use do they have for makeup? None, right? Their skin is blemish free. And honestly, blemish free skin is hardly appropriate for an actual woman who may have acne scars due to the DHT in the skin meeting the surface due to the hormones expressed during the menstrual cycle. <laughs> Hormonal acne, we get it. Sun damage. It isn't just for the elderly or fair skinned women in their early 20s. They even can have, you know, such discoloration or hyperpigmentation. And as a result, We benefit from wearing foundation and, you know, BB creams, CC creams, concealers, and the like. This is not to say a clear complexion is undesirable. Indeed, it's desirable in all cultures. It it holds true. In spite of, you know, varying beauty standards from culture to culture, a good complexion is one thing that remains constant among all people. I'm only trying to say that imperfections in skin are generally a mark of adulthood and experience. So to disdain them completely, um, I, I think there's some conscious, some subconscious predatory desire there. Also, the idea of keeping you natural is shrouded in keeping you humble and inexperienced like a child. So many of us take on a, uh, what I'm going to call a super saiyan form of ourselves. When we get all gussied up in our hair extensions, nails, makeup, and finery, we turn heads and attract better, more high quality men to ourselves this way, as opposed to, you know, being suited in athleisure and a bare face with a messy bun. The types of men who notice us change with how we present ourselves. A blue collar man may find you attractive in public while wearing a bonnet, but it's the white collar man who will seek your hand and commitment when you wear that little black dress with red bottom pumps and pearls. Promoting a naked face as a standard brainwashes vulnerable women into thinking that this is what men truly want. This could not be further from the truth. Men want beauty by any means. 
men who cannot afford women with breast implants, complain the most about breast implants and other cosmetic procedures, calling these women fake and undesirable. Meanwhile, wealthy men are both attracted to uh, and pay for these procedures, presenting them as gifts for the women that they fancy. Now, these same men who protested hair extensions, makeup, and plastic surgery follow women with all three all over social media. Just just ask an Instagram or OnlyFans model. It is the desire of the incel to make himself the perfect man for you despite how MGTOW he may claim to be. He still wants to be seen as a god or demigod in your eyes. Now, pulling off his preferences may seem like a win for an inexperienced woman at first, but once you're with him, you see sooner than later why women of his peer group have passed him by. You begin to see women in more worthy relationships with men who protect and provide, while you wonder why he does not do the same for you, although you embody what he called his every desire. You ditched the wigs, weaves, the makeup, the finery, the education. You humbled and quieted yourself only to realize that he does not truly value such a woman, but rather he feels he can hold such a woman captive as a shield for his bruised and tender ego. How can he be attracted to Rihanna and you too? How is he attracted to the Kardashian-Jenner clan and you when you are their utter opposite, naked-faced and unadorned as the day you were born? It's because beauty is beauty, be it by hook or by crook, and this is what men respond to. Every man who tells you women with sexual experience and age are gross would give up a vital organ to be fancied by Kim Kardashian, who is a thrice divorced mother of several children, as well as a woman with an expansive far-reaching number of exes and men in comparison to the average woman. It is not true that men are not attracted to older experienced women. Explain the MILF and the cougar then, if that's the case. What they are afraid of when it comes to older, experienced women is of being compared to other men, paling in comparison to the experiences of your past that creates an environment conducive to rejection and replacement of such a man. What if her ex was a better lover, provider, listener, speaker, etc.? He shrivels under these thoughts unless he is a grown man with a mature mind willing to prove he is peak value because he actually is. <clears throat> like my partner I love you baby look these are lies meant to disempower women and make them dependent on male validation which includes the exact type of attention seeking behaviors excuse me induces the exact type of attention seeking behaviors these same incels are so quick to ridicule Think of all the women who pride themselves on being makeupless, all natural male identified pygmies who have learned to embody these qualities but are single mothers or lonely individuals who are repeatedly abused and mistreated by men who obsess over criticizing women who adorn themselves with the aforementioned finery and accessories. That is a man's expression of bitterness, constantly berating women who he secretly wants to be with but could never be considered by because he doesn't measure up. My sisters and I, you know, um, so at the various parts of our lives where we did and did not have our fathers involved, and without fathers, I mean, you're a sitting duck for all kinds of assault, uh, sexual molestation, exploitation, kidnapping. I mean, pe- people will sniff you out. They'll hear about you. They'll find out about you. If there's no dad in the home, I mean, men will make a meal out of you and they won't feel bad about it. My sisters and I were targets for lower caste men for years until we became more experienced and educated. We have attracted some of the best, most distinguished men of our lives now that we know better and now that we're older. We didn't need virginity or bare faces. We needed to expect better from men and believe better about ourselves. That really was the key. 
these men that we are with are not at all turned off by the fact that we have a past or are older than t our teens and 20s. It's, it's actually just the opposite. They are mounted as men above men, worthy of keeping women that lesser men could not. So many people think it's the woman who cannot keep a man, but oftentimes it is the man who is not worthy of the woman who settled for him and the eventual split becomes inevitable. Having a resume, honey, means you have experience. Any good employer is looking for someone with experience rather than some child to put at the head of their precious empire. Think about it. In contrast, consider the many Afro-American women on YouTube who obsess over the so-called Dusty because in reality, they're attracted to the so-called Dusty men who don't want them because of their phenotype. You know, Dusties tend to be racist, misogynist, colorists, regardless of race, who tend to discriminate against heavily against noticeably black women. Not because they don't find black women attractive, oh, they do. But because they themselves are in need of a social currency that they intrinsically lack, so they seek it through a partner who is closer to what society approves of. Closer to white is right in this case. Now consider, for example, the overweight yet mildly attractive woman of any race who often find themselves with more, more often than not, with gorgeous men. <laughs> they find themselves paired. These mildly attractive overweight women find themselves paired with gorgeous men, although normal men of lesser attract uh, attraction disdain them, humiliate them, make fun of them, say they don't want them, would never touch them. <laughs> it's because these men have so much so social currency that they do not need a trophy woman to wave around in the faces of other men because they're at the top of the food chain in and of themselves without some extra appendage of validation. This is why you find so many white billionaires from countries outside of America paired with African-American women in specific. They have the freedom to place value on true beauty and tr true beauty and true character in a way men beneath them cannot because they, these men, are what all men are striving to be. They don't need a blonde with blue eyes to validate them because they are literally the supreme force of the world considering they are the inheritors of global colonizers. They flaunt their black woman with pride as if to say, I get to rest in the beauty of having an apex woman because I'm of such peak value. I have the privilege of looking beyond race for the apex woman of quality. And I'll find her whether she is in blue, black or white. Many white men in my home state, which is Washington, right, home of Bill Gates, and I've, I've met his father, by the way, um, more than that, but I'll continue. Um, many white men in my home state have said in private that they understand black men as the trash men of the dating world, picking up the trash of other races in exchange for their blackness that they do not see black men with white women as one of them, but rather in submission to them as white men, having honored and married women of the white race that no self-respecting white man would honor, with, <laughs> wouldn't honor even with a kind glance. There are some white women that white men avoid, white men of valor and of honor avoid, and they are quick to get picked up by all sorts of black men, including good black men who are worthy of better women because th there's a social exchange. My blackness for your whiteness. And that is a form of submission. In some cases, not all cases, that's a form of submission to white supremacy. In some cases, a non-white man who makes much less money than certain apex inheritors of colonizers may find himself in love with a black woman, but sees a need to be paired with a non-black woman in hopes of increasing his social ranking within, this, within the socially constructed pecking order. 
a vicious cycle that has left the black woman who knows her worth divesting from the average black man in spite of her actual love for him because she expects to be treated better than what his molested mentality will will allow him to. (laughs) Baby sister. I want to close by saying, do not, do not allow men to flaunt you in front of older women as their young superior thing by merit of youth alone, because someday you will be that older woman. The only other option is death. So, I mean, if you want to die young, then maybe that's an option for you. Don't allow him to use you as a weapon and the path of ageism. Truth is, any man above 50, 45, 40, seeking a woman in her teens or early 20s is more than likely some psychologically devastated man molested by institution, mentally molested by institutionalized racism or his own personal failures and lack of distinction. There are exceptions to the rule, so hear me out. Truly, there are women in their early 20s who come off as wise women of 40 and vice versa. And there's no blame upon them in my sight for going where they are equally yoked mentally. This, however, is not the norm, and we know it. We know it. The norm for these age gaps that are beyond, you know, five years between men and women is predatory. Now, here is what I will say to that, because my partner and I are 10 years apart, but I'm also in my 30s. I, I, I'm not a child by any means. But when it comes to you 25 and under, your prefrontal cortex, your brain is not even fully developed. And these men know that even if they don't know it scientifically, they know it in a commonsensical kind of way. And they seek to take advantage of that. And that's wrong. That's wrong. It's an exploitative power dynamic. It was Stalin. After uh, coming after Hitler, he said, um, if you want to be happy for life, get yourself a seven-year-old. That's a quote, okay? Okay. I don't even want to repeat that. That's what he said. These predators imprinting themselves on your youth until you believe it's love when in reality it's a trauma bond and you're a victim of Stockholm Syndrome. I arm you today with the knowledge I wish an older auntie would have told me. Unfortunately, those pygmies were too busy being jealous, male-identified women. Too busy hating on a kid, jealous of a kid, to reach out their hands and protect me from the low-quality men that they were trying to settle for, that they were seeking validation from. I offer you the gift of information I cried for an older woman to give to me. I remember writing a poem in my church. I said, I'm willing to submit under the things you have to teach me, but I'm at a disconnect because no one cares to reach me. Oh, it started like this. Women of the church, you see me reaching for your hand, but you leave me reaching because you're worried about your man. I'm willing to submit under the things you have to teach me, but I'm at a disconnect because no one cares to reach me. I was a powerfully religious child. I mean, when you feel like you don't have any protection, you turn to God in a major way. (laughs) In a major way. But the truth is, religion wasn't going to save me. Right? Bible says my people suffer for a lack of knowledge, and I'm not even a Christian, but I still hold that. Here's the knowledge, baby, sis. Be careful out there. A a unicorn in the form of auntie corn. I love you. 
and I'm out of here.